Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, History of Us. I am so excited to have you back here with me today as we continue to learn about some of the indigenous Americans of the United States. Today we are going to be talking about Pocahontas and I just wanted to give a little content warning for this video. It is a very sad video that deals with death and other depressing topics so I just wanted to let you guys know that before we get into the story. So let's get started. Pocahontas was born in 1595. She had many names but her birth name was or is believed to be Matoaka, which means flower between two streams. She was nicknamed Pocahontas by her father because it was the name of her mother, and she officially took that name when she came of age. She was the daughter of Wahoo Seneca, the main chief in the Powhatan Confederacy, which was called Tenasokoma. She was one of his favorite children, potentially his favorite out of his many children. Pocahontas' mother died while giving birth to her. When she was about 10 or 11, the Jamestown settlers arrived in the spring of 1607. There are many narratives about what happened between John Smith and Pocahontas, which is the tale that you've probably seen in the Disney movie. One says that she helped John Smith escape after he was captured by Opechanakoa, the half-brother of her father, the main chief of the Powhatan Confederacy, because he had been forcing villages to give up their food by threatening chiefs. However, Smith's story states that he was sent to meet Chief Powhatan, who threatened to kill him, but Pocahontas threw herself in front of him to protect Smith. Many historians believe this may have been a ritual to symbolize him joining the tribe and that he wasn't really in danger. Another story states that Smith was well liked by Pocahontas' father and invited to become a werewolf and represent the English within the Powhatan village. It was during this four-day ceremony that Smith alleged Pocahontas saved his life, but as I mentioned before, his life wasn't really in danger. In addition, as Pocahontas was just a young girl, she wouldn't have been allowed at this ceremony, so she wouldn't have been able to save him if his life was really in danger. After Smith was released, it was the English who planned to execute him. It is also said that Pocahontas helped convince her father to be kind to the Jamestown settlers, but the Powhatan people were originally welcoming to the Jamestown settlers, or according to a narrative passed down from one of their tribes. Pocahontas often brought them food herself, but it was food that she was given to give to them by her father, and she always went with an older chaperone for her own protection. Her presence was a symbol of peace. As Pocahontas was her father's favorite child, her presence was extremely indicative that her father wanted to maintain peace with the settlers. She also learned English and may have been helpful with communication because of the language barrier between the Powhatans and the English. However, relations between these groups worsened and Smith began to threaten other villages' chiefs in order to get food for the English. When Mahu Seneca approached Smith about this, Smith alleged, once again, that the chief threatened his life, and Pocahontas saved him again. But, once again, he wasn't ever in danger from the Powhatans, and it is extremely unlikely that Pocahontas would even have been able to access him in order to save him if he had been in danger. As relations continued to worsen, the English were often found abusing the residents of Powhatan villages. Pocahontas' father stopped allowing Pocahontas' journeys to Jamestown. After hearing rumors that the English wanted to capture Pocahontas, she and her husband, Cocoa, moved to a village that was farther from the English. And it was here that Pocahontas had her first child, little Cocoa. However, Pocahontas was still not safe from the English. She was given to the English captain Samuel Argo in 1614 to keep a Powhatan village safe. He was supposed to release her after a short period of time and ensure that she wasn't harmed, but he ransomed her to her father. In addition, tribal narratives state that his men killed her husband, Kokoam, as well, although her son was spared as he had been given to other tribal women in the absence of his mother. When the chief, Pocahontas' father, offered to pay the demanded ransom of stolen weapons, English prisoners, and corn, the English still didn't release her because they wanted to keep influencing her father. As a teenager, Pocahontas was baptized as Rebecca and married to John Rolfe, even though she was already married to Kokoam and had a son with him. 
Although many people believed this showcases her abandoning her people or truly embracing the English way of life, there is also a high possibility that she viewed these actions as the best way to survive her capture and prevent the English from lashing out at her people for her acts of disobedience. It is also believed that the English lied to her that her father was unwilling to pay the ransom, when the truth was that he was completely ready and willing to do so. Luckily, her father was able to send her older sister, Mata Chana, to help watch over her. She had a son at this time, but it may not have been with Rolf. He was named Thomas Rolf, and that was in 1615. Pocahontas went with Rolf in England in order to showcase the supposed peace between her people and the colonists, and to raise money for the Virginia Company. Mata Chana, Pocahontas' sister, went with him as well. Well, there, Pocahontas was treated very well and she became kind of famous for her beauty, or her exotic beauty, because the English probably weren't very familiar with Native Americans. Unfortunately, Pocahontas died when she was 22 on the return trip to America. It is possible, some say, that she was poisoned by the English after she became ill, after she dined with Captain Arbel, but there are also many other medical explanations for her sickness. It could have been seasickness. She could have had another condition, such as appendicitis. She simply could have eaten something that no one else at the dinner had eaten and gotten sick because of that, but not intentionally. So that narrative is not necessarily true, and it's unlikely that it is true, as it is simply circumstantial evidence. That is the end of Pocahontas' story. I know that's not the story that you were probably taught, and it is a very sad story, but I am very glad that I was able to share it with you, and I hope that you appreciated learning this story and that you have a wonderful day. If you are interested in where I got all this information, I will list my sources at the end of this video. If you want to reach out about any questions or any suggestions for other Indigenous Americans I should feature in this series or any suggestions for topics in general, you are welcome to comment on this video. You're welcome to email me at abby at us at gmail.com. You're also welcome to fill out the topic suggestions form that I will link in the description of this video to suggest future topics as I have not decided the topic that will follow this one. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.